What's going on guys? Well, today's finally the day. We're gonna do some work on the road glide. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the bars. We're gonna put the thrashing setup on it. We're gonna change the triple tree. We're gonna do the gauge relocation. I've already got the switch canceled out so it doesn't work. It only works on that one there and not here anymore. I'm also gonna change out to a colored matched inner fairing and a colored matched vent cover here as well. So lots of stuff coming on for this bike. I've been waiting to do this one until all the parts come in, they finally come in. So this is gonna be a long one. We're gonna run through them and do them both in one shot since everything's coming off. So this should be interesting. Can't wait to see how this is gonna look with all that gunship gray stuff going on and the thrashing configuration in the bars. So real excited about it. I will get you switched around over to the overhead and show you the thrashing parts, and then we'll back off and take a look at the Hogwarts uh, color matched inner fairing and vent, and then uh, we'll get at it. So, see you in a minute. Okay, so now we have all the thrashing parts laid out on the overhead table here, so you can kind of see what we got going on. You've got the new triple tree with a slide out cover for the lock and also has these little adjusters that go this way or this way, depending on where you wanna have your risers, either closer to the rider or further from the rider, so that's pretty cool. Comes with a set of keys, uh, three quarter head bolts to go replace the ones that are in there. And then we've got the gauge relocation kit, which is the new bezel that comes on there, the backing for it. It's got a couple gaskets to cover it. Comes with a wire loom and an extension. Uh, it's got these three millimeter bolts that go through there that are hex heads. And then merging down the line, you've got the high bend handlebars that I'm gonna put on there with the thrashing cover. And then you can see this is the one that's got the threaded holes uh, for this to go into, which will bolt through back here and then that gives you the adjustable um, gauges in the front. And these are 3 16 hex head, and then they're held on with 12.38 uh, bolts for there. And then the nine and a half inch risers with about a two inch pullback, American made, made in the USA. And then the blacked out perch clamps, which is a 5 16 uh, 12 point bolt that holds those on. And this all builds out what's gonna be done for the bars and the gauge relocation and the triple chi chains that I'm gonna do. We'll get rid of all those other things and take it up to the higher high bend bars. So real excited about it. Uh, we'll get things situated here. We'll go over and take a look at the Hogwarts color matched uh, duck cover and interfering that I'm gonna put on with the new doors that come with it. And then once that's done, we'll get everything lined up and start getting at it. So, real excited, can't wait to see it all on. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so for the Hogwarts stuff, it's a little big for me to put on the overhead table that I normally have, but here's a shot of what everything looks like. So, here's the color, match, color matched uh, vent cover that comes on, so normally those are black that comes through. You can see it's a really nice looking job with the gunship gray. Comes wrapped in this foam, plus these Hogwarts bags, which is really nice. And then over here, you have the color matched inner fairing, also gunship gray. And it also comes with new cubby doors right here. And on the back are the screws that comes with it to mount. Uh, back on there so they give you replacement screws so make sure you check there that those are in there if you should get these. The other thing I'll say about this is as I mentioned in the video with my uh, stretched side covers uh, that the color is pain in the butt right to get them to go they kept having dries and drips and stuff like that but when they finally got this one back to me after a couple shots it looks really good everything looks nice nice equal paint, no uh, orange peeling or anything like that like I had initially. So very good there. Just make sure you check your stuff out real good before you sign off and say, yeah, that's good. Contact support, they'll make it right. It's just a little bit of a delay going back and forth where they fix it, but they did fix it. So I can't say anything bad about that. Uh, just sucked because there was a bit of a delay. But anyway, this is what they look like. These are gonna go on the bike and this is how they ship. Will very well protected. 
uh, looks real nice and man I can't wait to have that on there I just I'm not a big fan of the black one so um, it'll be nice to have the gunship gray on there to have that finish off the bike now that I got the spoiler kit so anyway so that's what we're looking at for parts and then we'll go ahead and start getting things set up and then we'll start taking things apart and uh, get at it so see you in a few minutes all right so we got the camera all rearranged we got everything set up I put the bike up on a jack so that I can take the pressure off the wheel and be able to turn it to get different parts off and also for the bolts and everything else when we tighten them up also I had a lid locks on here and some perch mount items on here so a little bit different than the standard ones where they're normally like a T27 or something like that I had different accessories on here so I took those and my phone mount off and everything first initially just because it's just going to vary based on different ones but so to start out with there's this little plate right here that's underneath the key now I've already gone to the Harley dealership and have this switched over to where my power turns on here right so I don't have my key near me but power turns on here this is no longer in use you have to have that done before you can try to do the thrashing triple tree change and stuff like that because it's got a built-in lock and this key is no longer needed so one turn on their dealership takes about 20 minutes or so just you know go down there give them a call say hey I want to get that done they'll tell you when to come down and do that but so anyway so we're up on top of a jack we've got this to where we can spin it around and get to different things the first thing you got is this little plate right here and this little guy just pops up there's a little notch and you pop that up like that and then pull it out turn the wheel and that's your little notch right there so that guy comes out and you can turn this sideways so when this gets ready to go then we're going to go take um, what is this t25 i believe yeah t25 and take off the two side uh, gauge bolts right here so we'll take those off now notice i have a tank cover and I have a fender cover, which you really can't see right now, but I have a fender cover on there because I don't want to take a chance of having anything drop, right? So we've got the one side out. I'll take the other side out. So now we should be able to pull this nacelle forward. So you can see right here, this all just kind of comes loose. Right, and you can try to pull it forward to get to the gauge wires in the back. You got this pulled forward. There's three connectors back here you have to disconnect uh, in order to get the gauge cluster out. And then I recommend taking pictures of everything just because you want to make sure you don't forget something. So you've got the center cluster plug here. I think you can see that one so you take that guy off and then there's two more down below those are dummy cables the two that I grabbed right here the ones on the bottom kind of hard to get to there, Jesus. so you pull those two connectors off and your gauge gauge cluster comes out like that and you can see the two I just pulled out down here we're here and here this one was on the bottom, so it's kind of a pain. The other two clip right there and there. So you pull that guy out. We're gonna set this off to the side for the moment. All right. So now you have this dummy cable here, a dummy cable here, and this connector here. And then you've got a series of other wires in here that you're gonna to wanna to take a picture of. But first, we're gonna pull this bottom nacelle off. It's a T40. Torx bit so, bit, so you just turn that to the side, get it in there, hang on to it, and spin that off, being careful not to um, scratch your interfering. Okay, so I have the spoiler kit on here, so it made the bottom one a little more difficult, but there's the bottom one on that side. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Pull little bottom of the cell off down there from the bottom now this top piece 
It's supposed to be just two little clamps that hold it together just for a grab like that. So you just separate them and pull them out. From my understanding, we're not gonna use that again, so. All right, so once you get that off, now you can see your wires. You got all your loose connections here. And so you can kind of see where everything goes. And you wanna kind of grab and pay attention to anything that is not connected. Different accessories for the bike that you may not have on it, such as heated grips or something like that, right? So what we'll probably do is take some tape and mark those up and cover them so they're not there. But now you've got these connections right here that have to come off. And so we're gonna do the same thing as before and take a picture. And then we'll disconnect these wires. And then there's this back plate on here that we have to get off. Should be able just to push these out. So once you pop those wires out, and you've got some tie wraps on this other stuff. Cut those. Careful not to cut your wires. So now that you got that all done, now you can see all your wiring. So we got this one that's not used. We got these that disconnected from the bars. So now you want to clear all your wires. So now the ones I'm not going to reconnect are all taped up with blue tape. And the ones I need to reconnect aren't. There's a ground wire here that we don't need to use because we're going to have everything grounded to the to the bike itself with the, with the new bars. So that one's not gonna get used. So I'm gonna tape those up just so I know that I don't need them. There's one right here, which is the security lock. And now everything from the bars is disconnected. Before we do anything else, we're gonna take off the levers and all that stuff so that we can work on taking the bars off, right? So we've got to get these things off. All right, so now that we got this all ready to go, we got the wires for the bars sitting here. Next thing we're gonna do is take off the controls and the perch clamps, and get those off. So we'll go ahead and take this side loose first. Oh, well, let me show you too. Um, many of you have noticed when you're trying to adjust your levers that you can't. There's notches right here and these have a pin in there. So when this perch clamp is on there, it only allows you to turn it so far and that it hits the pin, right? And so also with the thrashing bars, these are so long, they won't sit by the bend. So that's why you have to get their, their perch clamps for that. So, all right, and then on this side, and then now we've got the controls here. So for this little tab, all you really do is just kind of lift and pull back towards you. And that little guy pops off. So now we'll take off the clutch side um, controls here. It's a T25. There's one on the top and the bottom. And there's a little tab right here. You just use a screwdriver like I did or a pick to pull that off. And that pulls that off. And now your controls are loose. Pop this guy off. And now you can see where your throttle grooves sits right here and grooves in. And there's your grip, throttle by wires right here. So where you get two wires is you've got the wire for the controls here and the wire for the throttle by wire. So now there's a loose, 
and the bars are ready, the wires are ready to be pulled out. But so now that we got everything disconnected, we've got the mirrors and the levers off. Now we can go ahead and take off the top clamp and pull the bars off. And the top clamp bolts are a one quarter hex bit. Now I'm holding the bars against my ribs. I think there's probably a pin in there, but until I know I'm gonna hang on to them because even though I got the tank protector on there, I don't wanna take a chance of the bars dropping down and banging on anything. There's top clamp. Now we bust those loose. And there's our factory 47 signature series bars all out. Very nice. There's the pin right there I was talking about. Check your ground wire, because this one had it wrapped around where that uh, cable was for the levers. So wanna make sure that's not in the way. So now with that, we have the top bolt here and two pinch bolts here. So the bottom one's a quarter inch and the top pinch bolt is 5 sixteenths. So now we'll get this guy loosened up. All right, notice I did not touch this center bolt. And there is your triple tree, lock included. Did not have to take the lock out. This is the one I was warning about right here that was wrapped around the cable. So now she's all ready for the new thrash and triple tree. All right, didn't take it out, didn't touch it, didn't do anything. So beautiful. Once we connect those, those will go in the front and get all cleaned up because that new triple tree is gonna be there. And then at this point, I'm going to stop on the bar section and then we're going to work on the fairing and take out the outer fairing and then take the inner fairing out and all that because I don't have anything in my way. And a lot of this stuff is already disconnected uh, that I would have to disconnect for that. So I like minimizing my scratch factor, so. All right, so now we're ready to take the outer fairing off. So as you can see, I covered up some of the high contact points with some plastic. You can use blue tape, you can do whatever, just in case I slip off with a screwdriver or something like that. I just don't want it to scratch anything up and cause any more damage, right? So. <laughs> A little left over. Now we're gonna work on these left and right lower vents. And these have two screws, which are T25s. One's right here on the side and one's right there. We're gonna remove both of them. And just make sure when you take all these parts off so you don't lose them, put the screws in the holes as you set the parts down. At least that way you know what goes where and it kind of helps so you don't drop nothing out. So, all right, let's get these out. Nice thing to notice, these also say left hand and right hand, all right? So and that's obviously as you're sitting on the bike, all right? So, Here's your left hand, and we already did the right hand. Okay, now that we got those vents out, now we can reach up underneath here and disconnect the gauges from the inner fairing. And you're gonna to wanna to use a picking tool to get up on top of that to lift that up so you can disconnect it. Okay, once the gauges are disconnected, we're gonna remove these two upper radio support bracket screws and these two lower radio support bracket screws. Those are a T27. Once you're done with that, now you're gonna disconnect your accessory outlet over on this side, one where you plug in anything on the side to charge or whatnot. Disconnect the gray wire, and then I just use a little bit of a small set of channel locks right here 
and just gently move that up. Stick your finger in here and hold it and unscrew that cover and pull out your accessory plug. Then you take a prying tool, plastic one if you got it. There's a little plug that's right here on the side. And you just take a prying tool and pop that little plug out so you can remove power adapter cable here. All right, then the next thing you gotta do is remove the two speaker pod bolts and the um, frame bolt right here, which is a 7 /16th. The speaker pod bolts are a 3 /16th. If you have an internal antenna like I do on the ST, make sure you're clearing these wires off of the boxes wherever they're stuck. That way, they're, when you try to pull this off, it's not gonna rip those out, okay? Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the USB cable here, the top of the radio, and just take a pick. There's a little black tab. Push that down till you hear a snap, and then you pull that wire out. And then there is a little retaining clip right here. So you just take a pry tool and pry that out. Now, because I have the spoiler on here, I have to take out the spoiler bracket bolts here on the side. And those are T27. Okay, once that's done, now we're gonna undo the four fairing mounting support bolts right here. Those are a half inch socket. We'll take those out. Now there's a support right here where there's two tabs that come in there. So this isn't gonna go anywhere on you. So when we get ready to tip this back, uh, it'll hold in there. You just gotta support it while you do it, so. All right, so for all intents and purposes, we should be ready to tip this forward and pull off the inner fairing. And there's your inner fairing. Just remember, like I said, you got these little clips right here for your antenna. Be sure you grab those out. So now we'll take this and put it over here on the side out of the way. And then we're gonna put two of these screws back in here to hold this fairing support bracket in place while we do all the other part stuff. Well, that was interesting. So not too bad. And now we'll go over to the overhead and start working on getting all the stuff pulled off the other one, put on the, on the new one. See you in a minute. Okay, so now we got this turned around on the overhead. This is the old inner fairing. You can see you've got your glove boxes here and here. You've got your gauges. You've got its antenna clasps on the side of it that we have to do. The glove boxes that have those on there, those will stay with it, so that's not a big deal. And now we're gonna go through and start taking off um, the gauges and, and work through those. So there's three Torx bolts right here on each one of these that go on. They are a T25. Now it's important to remember when you pull these off, make sure you know which one goes on what sides. I have the spoiler kit, so I have these two brackets here and here on each side that go on. So I've got to take those guys off and those guys are a 3 16th. Now the next thing we gotta do is remove the glove boxes. Those are two screws, one here and one here, which is also a 3 16th. All right, looked like I had a camera glitch. It froze on me, sorry, so I'm gonna turn this one. All right, so once we get those pieces off, we're gonna go and take off the glove box. And now we're gonna work on taking this hinge off and the door. So the hinge is a T25. And 
And then the door, that one is the T15. You wanna make sure you grab these two little rubber stoppers. Pull them out, hopefully again that they don't break. Like that, okay. So now it looks like we have everything off of the old fairing or inner fairing. So we're checking everything. Now we'll do a once over, make sure we got everything off. And that's it. That one is done. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So now what we're gonna do is we'll move this guy out of the way. We'll bring over the new one and then we'll put everything back on opposite of what we just did. Okay, be right back. All right, so here's a new color match fairing. You can see, very nice job. Check it all out, make sure everything's good. There's no errors, I cleaned it all up. And all that ahead of time. We'll just flip back over like so, so we can see what's going on. And we'll start out by putting our gauges on. So as I'm sitting here, if this was to spin up, this is how it looks on the bike and the fuel gauge goes on the left side. So we will flip this back over, slide it into place and reattach our three screws. Like that and then we'll flip it over just cause I'm weird that way and we got the fuel gauge on the correct side. So now we'll go in and we'll put the voltage gauge in. All right, so now we'll spin it around and work on getting the doors and the hinges on. And we'll repeat the process on this one. Okay, so now we're ready to put the boxes on and the uh, fairing spoiler bracket as well. Got your USB cable out and ready to go back where it's gotta go. And then just tighten them down. Now everything is back on the inner fairing and so we can go and set it back on the bike and get it back in place. Now we've got all the parts switched over to the new inner fairing. We're going to put it back in. Once you get everything all realigned back up, put some Loctite on and tighten up these uh, fairing bolts right here. I'm gonna start by snugging up all the boxes and the things like that around the side. We're gonna reconnect the gauges. Now we're going to install the upper and the lower radio support bracket screws. We can rerun and attach our USB wire. Now we'll run our accessory wire back down. We're gonna put in the spoiler support bolts here in the front. All right, so now we've got the vents put back in on each side. And I think at this point now we're ready to go work over on the overhead and start looking at switching out the stock duct cover for the color max duct cover. So let me move the camera over there and uh, we'll get started. So now we've got the stock Harley duct cover and the new Hogwarts color matched duct cover. So if we flip these over, you can see this is just the shell and this is a bottom part. So what we need to do here 
is we need to heat up these areas where there's some 3M tape on the inside and then pop off these bolts or these uh, pins and then switch everything over to here and then put it all back on this side. So we'll get started on that. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my heat gun. And we're gonna use this to heat up these areas so that we can loosen up that 3M tape and allow us to pop this thing off. Then we'll use a prying tool to pry up underneath the edges. You can see here's the old tape that's all on here. So I'll clean this stuff off, check our vent to make sure it still works so we didn't damage anything. Now we'll take the new one and set it over it, but we're not gonna push it down. Just wanna see how it fits. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some 3M tape and we're gonna place tape in these areas right here. Once you get them all done, now you just line up your duct on the posts. Then you apply even pressure for a little while, about 60 seconds on them. Check your operation. And now we can take off this rubber seal. So you just line up the edges, start popping them in. Make sure these are pulled all the way through and then everything's seated. And there is your new color matched air duct cover. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so now that we've got the interfering mounted, we've got our vents installed, we've got everything secured, ready to go. Now I think it's time that we move over and head back towards working on the handlebars and the gauges and getting those prepped to be installed. All right, so now we got the next stage of stuff, which is the thrash and bar assembly and the gauges and the gauge relocation, the triple tree. So what we're gonna start out with is getting these original gauges out. So these are a T25. We will not be using this again, so we can set this off to the side. You pop off these little covers. You won't be needing those, set those aside. Put that seal right around this edge. Use the flat side to line it up. Once you get your gauges in place, your rubber seal, pop this guy in there. And there's your new gauge configuration. I'm just gonna mock this up a little bit because that's where that's gonna go. And then this will go here and you can flip it around depending on how you want it. The next thing is we're gonna mock up the triple tree, right? So I'm not gonna take these back out. And so then what you do is figure out where you want your position. So you can put it here and have it further away or you can put it here have it closer to you. I'm gonna put mine closer to me. So now these are good, it's mocked up, and you're ready to put that on the bike. All right, so we got this part all prepped up. So next thing will be to go over and put the triple tree on the bike. All right, now that we've got the triple tree all built, I've taken the screws out for the pinch bolts so that we can get this on, and then once it's in place, we'll put some blue Loctite on it and tighten it down. So make sure all your wires and cables are out of the way so nothing's gonna get pinched in there with it. Slide this up over there and work it down. Not going anywhere. And that is your triple tree. All right, so now we're ready to work on the bars. So since I'm doing this by myself, what I've done is I have a vise on the table and I'm using these couple boxes to kind of hold up the end of the bars. And then I taped up the wires that have two ends just to make them a little easier so they don't pull anything off. This one should be fine, it's just a single wire. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a double wire first. You can tell by the wires which one is which. You got your throttle by wire over here, and then the other one is your 
gauges here or your um, controls. So now I'm just gonna start working these through together and see if I can get them to kind of play along and come out nicely. Control one came out easy. So that's gear, got the little things on there. So we'll keep this on this side so we know that's the throttle side. And now we'll just keep working this throttle by wire. Now I got the throttle by wire. You can see I taped it up. So nothing happens to it. So we'll set this off to the side here. All right, so now we'll do the other side, same thing. Just kind of pull it together, push and pull at the same time. Work it through, this one should come out nice and easy. And there's the other side controls. And that's it, cables are out. So now we'll switch it around and get the new bars on here and then see how that works. Okay, so now we got the thrashing bars on here. Big difference in size, obviously. Just make sure you got the right ones in the right directions and all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm gonna try to tape this one back so it's not so bulky since these are a little tighter. I'm gonna shove this guy through and see if I can get the throttle by wire behind it. Okay, so that one's through. Now, because this is a stiffer wire, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this to go through with the other one in there. There's the throttle by wire. Make sure that's in all the way. You'll want your controls to mount right over the hole and be careful this little ribbon right here. I'll move these out of the way and we'll feed through the other side. And the bars are wired. Okay, so that's that. We'll play with the controls and see how they go. And then uh, start getting the bars put together and on the bike and all that good stuff. So, okay, so I mounted the bars up, um, got those all connected. You can see the nice thrashing clamp that's on there and the high bend bars got them positioned where about I think I want them. I just have the throttle by wire kind of sitting on here right now and I put the control clamps on just to get an idea of what they're gonna look like. Uh, I have performance machine grips and I really like those. They're really slick because you can just change the rubbers out and that makes it kind of nice. On the clutch side, it just slides over the bar and you have to drill a little divot inside of there with a 1 8 inch drill and then once you get that in there you tighten it down that bar that that grip doesn't go anywhere so there's no gluing or anything and you can change out these rubbers when they wear out so that makes it really nice uh, i guess if we do new ones you'd have to get a new tube so now that we got these kind of in place i'm going to let those sit and we're going to take a look at the wiring all the existing wiring is all right here that's eventually going to get sucked down uh, underneath the frame in the front. The next thing we're gonna do is install this extension cable for the relocation and also this has the loom which we'll use to clean up and wrap all the wires with. So the way this goes, it only goes one way. There's a notch at the top that shows you the way that it goes. Snap that in until it goes all the way down. And then we'll lay this over here because that's where it's gonna go for the gauge when we put the relocation kit up here. So now what I think we'll do is we'll go through and pull these wires back down through the frame so we can get the extra slack now that we've got it attached and then clean this area all up. So let me get uh, switched around so we can take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, now we're ready to fish these wires down in. See how all tied up, it looks good in that loom. The way the loom works, just separates out, the wires go inside and it overlaps and you just work it all the way down through. 
And then once we get it in place, we can electrical tape it or tie wrap it, or I have some black duct tape that I'm probably gonna use instead because electrical tape tends to peel off. We're gonna put these down through the frame and out to the front since it's already all wound up in the loom. And then we'll adjust the cables as we need to for whatever coming out, right? Okay, now we're turned around towards the front. I've got the wires kind of heading down that way and we'll start to see them show up in there. All right, so now we go and plug everything in again. All right, looks like we have everything connected. And then once we verify it, then we can bundle this all up and tuck it up in this cavity area up here out of the way underneath the radio. Looks like I have everything connected. I don't see anything missing other than the ones that I marked not usable. So now we'll flip back around the front and we'll start looking at getting the gauges attached. All right, so now we're gonna work on getting the gauges mounted. So on the thrashing clamp, make sure you have the one with the two holes. If you get the whole kit, then you'll be fine. It's in there, but there's two holes. The reason why you need those is because this little mounting bracket goes on there and it can go two ways. It can go this way for a little higher pitch or this way for a little lower pitch. So it's gonna depend on preference, but I'm going to put this in the lower pitch because I think I'm gonna want them to be down a little bit more than have it to where it's up and potentially blocking my screen. All right, so we got our gauge loosely attached. I'm gonna stick this up in there. Let the gauge rest right there while we start this. Again, just gonna finger tight these in just to hold it. All right, so now with this, it pivots a couple different ways. So you can put it down like that, up like that, and that's why I wanted the lower pitch so that I could see which way it's going to go. Now as I'm sitting right here, I can see my full screen. I can see my gauges real good. Nothing's in the way when I'm sitting in my riding position. So I like that. So I like the lower, the lower angle better. So as I'm looking at these, it's like they're resting right on this clamp, but they're actually in front. And I got full view of my radio, I could reach up and hit it and stuff like that. So that's good. Gotta say, real impressed with the thrashing quality of products that they do. They are a little pricey, I won't lie but you get what you pay for and these things are really nice so i really like the way it looks now we can connect our gauge in the back so we've got our wire loom here and i can pull some of this slack forward from the front including the wire loom and we'll get this guy plugged in Okay, now we'll clean up our wire loom here and rewrap them. But now we check our turning. Very nice, okay. So next thing we'll work on is getting mirrors and levers and everything mounted up. All right, be right back. So we've got the loom run down here. We've got everything connected. I've bundled everything together. All the ones that I don't use are marked with blue. I've done a full lights check, everything works. So now what we're gonna do is tuck this up underneath here and get it up out of the way so that we can get the rest of the stuff in here. And then that way it cleans up that front end real nice. Cool, all right, I'll flip it around and, and show you the bars. All right, so here's the finished product. I've got the thrashing perch clamps on there, the clamp, the high bend bars, gauge relocation, the adjustment for the forward. As you can see, I tried to angle it from that point. Got great view of the, of the screen, no issues there. I will tell you that this was a pain in the ass. That was a pain in the ass. 
And if you've got someone to help you for an extra set of hands, you're gonna to wanna to have that because that, that was fun. But it's done. The other thing is because I had 40, factory 47 14 inch bars, I'm gonna to have to change out uh, the brake cable and the clutch cable because they're way too long, right? So the way that these are, probably the stock cables would work, but we'll figure that out. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, I just want to show the install there. I've got the wire loom all cleaned up and nice down here. It goes uh, down to the back in the front like you saw from the other side. And I'll take a picture of what it looks like now all cleaned up so you can see that. And then everything works. We've got the new color matched uh, interfering on it. I've got the duct ready to go, but the bars are done. The gauge relocation's done, grips are on, everything's mounted, looms all wired, everything's tested and verified. Um, it's all looking great. So the only thing left to do is get everything, put the headlight in, get everything mounted back up, put the fairing on, duct and windscreen. So we'll get started on that in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you that. I still have it up off the jack. So the only other thing I gotta do uh, before I close up the front is get up underneath on those three quarter inch bolts that's holding the, the uh, risers to the triple tree and just crank those suckers down, right? Uh, Cause it's a direct contact, it's metal to metal. So there's no bushings or anything like that. So you can really wrench on it and do a good job and get it down in there. So, and I'd show you how everything works right now, but I have the main fuse out because I'm doing wiring on my bike. If you don't, you will blow the five amp um, fuse for the battery inside the side fuse box. Trust me. So make sure you pull that main fuse out before you start unplugging, plugging wires, and especially doing bars and grips and, and you know all the stuff with the controls because something can happen and you can just pop it really fast. But all right, cool. So I'll get started on the other stuff and. Uh, be back in a little bit. All right, now that we got everything all re-ran and tied down and cleaned up, now we can start putting stuff back together. So we're gonna get ready to put the headlight back in. But since I have this all open, I'm gonna take advantage and clean some of these areas off that you can't normally get to. All right, so we're gonna get our headlight connected. So again, I have the main 50 amp fuse pulled because I'm doing a bunch of wire pulling. Now in the moment of truth, time to put the fairing back on. So I cleaned up all the hard to reach places before I grabbed it and then I'll get the other places when we get it on. So now let's slide this boy into place. I'm gonna put the bag back on and the side cover and then uh, take the tank cover and wheel cover off, drop it off the jack and show you guys what it looks like. All right, now that we got it all done, I figure I'll do a quick walk around and show you what it looks like. So there's the whole bike as it sits. And then we'll zoom in and take a look from the front. Of course, nothing really changed here. But when we start coming around the side, You'll see the color matched interfering, color matched duck cover, the thrashing bars and risers. And over here we got the gauge relocation with the loom going down there. You guys saw me cover all that inside. And if we sit on the bike or close to sitting on the bike, My head sits about right here. So you can see I got a clear shot of the gauges and of the screen. 
I'm going to get the cables changed out because these are for 14 inch bars and you won't need those. I'm guessing the stock bars will work with the stock cables will work with this. But you can see how that looks. Let me go around this side. See the new triple tree down there. It's got the interlocking mechanism right here to lock your your forks and that's about it so all right there you go we'll color this one done okay so we got it all finished now you can see the finished product you can see that we have the color interfering the color matched duct cover we've got the thrashing bars with the nine and a half inch two inch pullback risers gauge relocation uh, looks really nice and to give you an idea of where my seating position is if I was just to sit here like so I'm a lot more upwards than I was before where before I was kind of like up here and forward so I was leaning like this because those other bars were 41 inches wide so these are 32 inches about and right there in the center and forks the risers are in line with the forks. So overall, pretty happy with it. Can't wait to see how it rides. It's raining right now, so I'm not gonna be taking those out. Um, but we will, and then I'll do a video with my camera on there to show you kind of what it looks like as I ride it and what the feel is and kind of describe that. So other than that, um, not a bad install. Six hours or so, I think you could do it if you weren't filming it like I was and, and trying to do that. Remember I did a combination of the bars, the risers, and the interfering and the duct cover. If you were to do just the interfering and the duct cover, say probably about, I don't know, two and a half hours with that. And then if you're doing the bars and the risers and all that with the gauge relocation by itself, I'd say probably three, three and a half hours, four maybe if you take your time. But overall, I'm very happy with it. I think it looks much more complete and uh, I hope this video was helpful. And if you guys give a thumbs up or a thumbs down or something, put some comments in there. It, it helps me to understand if it's a thumbs down, why it's a thumbs down. Is it because you don't like the content or is it because you don't like the product or is it because you like the content and the product? It, it helps me out and then that way I can make better videos. So, all right, hope everybody had a good holiday and uh, let me know what you think. So now we're on our first maiden run with the new bars, risers, triple tree, gauge relocation, color interfering, and color duct. And boy, let me tell you what, what a difference this thing makes. Here you can see from my position what it looks like down on the gauges. Doesn't block my screen. The bike is so much more agile, at least it feels like it. I mean, it was pretty agile anyway. You know, especially when I rip it around, but way more comfortable to ride. Grips are in a better place, for me anyway. I'm definitely more upright. My arms aren't spread so far out, so it's a lot more comfortable. And I just got the new cables put in, so I don't have all that wiring twisting all around and everything else. And man, what a difference. So excited, well worth the upgrade. So if you guys are thinking about it, definitely Go with it, take a look, and uh, it made a huge difference, so no doubt whatsoever. All right, well, I just wanted to do a quick ride video to kind of show you what's going on and how it feels, and visibility for the mirrors and everything looks great with these different bars. Very, very happy with this upgrade. Highly recommend it, and uh, it's just awesome. So great job, Thrashing. Excellent design, quality parts, 
and just amazing huge difference so all right well have a good one ride safe everyone hope everybody has a good new year and uh, catch you on the next one